What's up guys, it's Justin here and welcome to my very first What's On My Mac video, which is something that has been much requested. If you would also like to see a tutorial on how I edit my videos, create my thumbnails, add my animations, go ahead and leave a like on this video and if it hits 1000, I'll add that to my queue. So the first thing is the computer I'm using and that is the MacBook Pro 15 inch with touch bar, which is from 2016 and I did a full review of this. And at first, if you might remember, I wasn't the biggest fan of it because of the reliability I was getting and the performance just wasn't up to par for what I was expecting and what I paid for. After a few updates though, I can tell you that this computer has been very reliable and has been my daily driver ever since. And it has replaced my iMac 5K essentially, which I was using for editing before and the performance I would say is very similar. The MacBook is portable, the touch bar is useless, the display is nice, and in general there are still things wrong with it, but as a video editor, it has overall been a pretty good experience and just what I needed. I also have a MacBook 12 inch with Retina display, which I take to school every single day for just answering emails, browsing the web, using Twitter, Photoshop, just some very basic things. Portability is by far its best asset and it is one of my favorite pieces of tech I own and the apps on all of my computers are pretty much the same. The skins I currently have on my MacBooks are the marble ones from dbrand, which I think looks incredible, especially with the space gray colors I have. And if you're taking your computer around, it's very important to have some protection because it is prone to scratches and nicks, which is something that I experienced on some of my previous computers. They are perfectly cut and available in many colors and textures, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link in the description section below alongside the wallpaper I'm currently using in this video, as I always forget to do that, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing is the web browsers I use, and the answer to that is that I use Safari and Chrome. Certain things are better on Safari and certain things are better on Chrome. It just comes down to an individual website you're trying to visit or something you're going to try to do, but I think it's handy to have both, and I find myself having tabs open on both of them at the same time. When it comes to the Mail app, I use the one that is built into Mac OS X Sierra. There really isn't anything special about it, but for me, it's gotten the job done, and I really have no complaints about it whatsoever. Moving on, I love to use notes all the time. So since I use the iPhone and the Mac, I'm able to have iCloud signed in and just type in a note that I think of on the spot at any time, whether it's a video idea or just something that I wanna keep in mind and talk about in the future. I've started to write things down right away when they come to mind, but I also use Evernote, which I'm going to get into a little bit later. For to-do lists, I just use reminders. I don't have any sort of calendar or anything that I go by. I do add deadlines to certain reminders, but I have all of my video ideas listed and also some reminders for schoolwork and just general things that have to be done. And I find that it does keep me on track pretty well, but I could always be a little bit more productive. So I'm going to try to find ways to improve that. As a collaborative note or more formal form of notes that I use for my videos, I use Evernote. It isn't perfect by any means and I don't love it, but for now it gets the job done and when it comes to just jotting down random stuff, I use the Notes app that is built into OS X and on the iPhone. But for more organizational stuff, even though these notes are not organized at all, I like to use Evernote and I originally got it to take school notes, but after like the first week, I wasn't taking any notes whatsoever, so I kind of repurposed it in a way and I'm using the free version at the moment. The next few app involves some of my production stuff, which is Final Cut Pro as my video editor. The reason why I love Final Cut Pro is because I'm so used to it. I've been using this thing since like 2011 coming from iMovie. And when it comes to all of the specific settings, the keyframes, the animations, the transitions, adding text, Everything is where I expect it to be and I've tried to switch to Premiere a few times but I just didn't feel the need and especially if you're a Mac user, the speed in Final Cut is crazy and a lot of YouTubers have actually switched to it over the past few years. Something that I also want to introduce to you guys is Setup. And what this is, is a monthly subscription that gives you access to over 65 up-to-date and full version apps that you can use. There's no ads, no paid upgrades, and also no in-app purchases. Setup is made by MacPaw, who are the creators of apps such as Clean My Mac, which is something that I use on like a weekly basis. I literally cannot live without it. I would definitely consider myself a power user and having an app like Clean My Mac just makes sure that my computer is always maintained at all times. So what I like to do whenever I'm done a school project or a video edit is to go in and clean my Mac and let it just clean my system completely. It has the ability to do a general clean, whether it is deleting your cache file and unnecessary files that might be slowing your computer down and also adding additional space that doesn't need to be taken up. And it can also clean up your additional mail files, your iTunes junk, uninstall apps completely, and also repair disk permissions and other permissions, maintenance scripts on your computer. 
It is one of the apps that I purchased myself years back for all of my computers, and it is included in setup for you to use as a full version. It costs just $9.99 a month, and there is a free one month trial with no credit card required that lets you just get an idea of the apps that are included and use them all completely free in its full version. The referral program also lets you get one month free for yourself for every friend you refer, so I'll be leaving a link down in the description section if you would like to learn more, and I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video. Moving further to the right is something that I use on like an hourly basis, and that is Spotify. I came from Apple Music, I had Apple Music for about a year, and I have no idea why I was still paying for it, because I never really found myself using it that much. It was nice to be able to have all of my music streamed directly from all of my devices, but after I switched to Spotify, it is literally the best thing that has ever happened to me. What I like most about Spotify is that it allows me to discover new music. I'm normally someone who would just listen to music that is on the top charts and not very often have time to go and find new songs, but with the discovered playlists, the browse functions, and just the general moods and genres that they put together on Spotify, having a number of playlists available just allows me to have some fresh tunes to just listen to while I'm doing some work and everything or just driving around. But I also really like the option to control your music to different devices and switch between them directly from the Spotify app on any computer or phone. For word processing and homework assignments, I use Microsoft Word simply because I grew up with it. In elementary school, they taught us on Word, and ever since I got my first computer, I had Word for Mac. And the only reason why I've stuck to it over the years is because it's so universal and I'm very used to it by now, but there isn't anything special about it. And I think Pages and Google Documents gets a job done at a much cheaper price. Grammarly is something that I just started using a few weeks ago and I'm not the greatest writer. I like to write and in terms of content, I don't think I have an issue with it, but when it comes to doing proper grammar, word repetitions, comma splices and all that kind of stuff, I didn't really pay attention in middle or high school. so. It's definitely a weakness when you read my writing, so I use Grammarly to kind of serve as an initial filter before proofreading my own work. Whenever I finish writing something, I just paste it into here and it runs it through a series of tests including spelling, grammar, punctuation, sentence structure, style, word repetitions, plagiarism if needed, vocabulary enhancement. It's not perfect by any means and I definitely recommend having yourself or someone else still proof you to work before you submit it anywhere. But just as an initial filter for grammar, comma splices, punctuation, and stuff like that, I think it does a pretty good job and it is what I use for every body of writing for my upcoming blog or articles for Best Buy. Last but not least is my package tracking app Deliveries, which is what I use on the phones as well, and it is perfect. There's literally nothing to complain about. Um, it lets you paste your tracking numbers, it also copies it directly from your clipboard, and it gives you the number of days that your package is estimated to arrive, and I like that they have a desktop version alongside the mobile version, and I'm pretty sure every person I know out there paid the $5 and has this for all of their devices. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this long and much requested What's On My Mac video that goes through some of the programs that I use for work, for school, and just general things as these are all things that I use on a daily basis. If you would like to also see me do a video on what's on my iPhone and what's on my Android as I haven't done one in about a year, go ahead and drop a comment down below. But I'm done school now and I'll be doing many more videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.